Hey everyone, welcome to another video. In today's guide, we're going to be taking a look at the best covenants, stats, and legendaries for every class and viable spec. We'll put timestamps for each class, but we highly recommend watching even the classes and specs that you don't plan on playing, as learning about each spec's covenant and legendaries will help improve your knowledge and gameplay inside of PvP drastically. The information in this guide has been put together with the help of our Rank 1 consultants, some of the best players for each class who we work alongside to bring you the most up-to-date PvP content you can find anywhere. But before we do get into things, we wanted to let you know that we recently relaunched our World of Warcraft site over at skillcap.com. It's got a brand new look and our course system is filled with introductory class guides for every class from some of the best players around, including Chanimal, Maro, Zipai, and Zuniaki, just to name a few. We've also packed in courses with arena commentaries and user reviews that you can watch to learn how the pros make their decisions in real time and help you all learn from your mistakes together. So if you're interested in taking your PVP game to the next level and starting your journey to Gladiator, head on over to skillcap.com slash wow and sign up today. Link in the description below. And if you're interested in joining our community discord, which is filled with useful resources and quick access guides, we've also got that linked below. Kicking things off, the first class is Warrior, specifically Arms Warrior. Now, starting with Covenant choices, there are actually two options. The first and best for 3v3 is going to be Kyrian. This is for Spear of Bastion, a small zone that you can put down that does some decent initial damage, followed by a bit more damage over 4 seconds, which also generates some rage. The biggest benefit of Spear of Bastion, though, is that once it's placed, enemies are unable to move out until it's over as they are tethered to the location for 4 seconds. This makes it incredibly strong when paired up with cooldowns like Bladestorm and Avatar. The second covenant worth considering is actually Venthyr. Venthyr offers the highest DPS out of any covenant for Warrior thanks to the ability Condemn. This ability replaces Execute and does some high damage if your target is above 80% or below 20%. This is great for just pure overall damage and especially shines when it comes to 2v2. It's also worth noting that this is the must-have choice for raiding, so if you're looking to do multiple forms of content, Venthyr is going to be the preferred option. When it comes to legendary powers, warriors have a couple of options once again. The best legendary and the one you should aim to craft first is Unhinged. Unhinged causes your Bladestorm to cast two mortal strikes at random nearby enemies. This makes your Bladestorm deal some very impactful damage, especially considering you can pair this up with Storm of Destruction, Sweeping Strikes, and Sharpen Blade. As for which slot to craft it on, gloves provide the biggest boost to stats. Then, for an alternative legendary, Misshapen Mirror is a great defensive option for when up against casters, increasing the length of your spell reflection and also allowing you to apply it to nearby allies. This makes you an absolute nightmare for casters to deal with, especially when paired up with the Overwatch PvP talent. Misshapen Mirror should ideally be crafted on the chest slot. Then, last but not least, the stat priority for Warriors is as follows. Strength is King, followed up by Versatility, then Haste, then Crit, and finally the weakest stat is Mastery. It's worth noting a good amount of Haste to aim for is around the 20% mark. Once you achieve that, Critical Strike becomes a little stronger. With Warriors covered, let's stick with the Plate classes and cover Paladin next, starting off with Threat. For Covenant choice, it's simple. Kyrian is head and shoulders above the rest, primarily down to Divine Toll. Divine Toll is one of the main reasons for that huge Ret Paladin burst that you've more than likely seen in Arena. Divine Toll has a minute CD and will judgment up to 5 targets. The strength in this ability comes when paired up with the Ringing Clarity Potency Conduit, allowing you to throw anywhere from 1 to 3 extra judgments for some ridiculous burst damage. Then, for your legendary as a Ret Paladin, you have a few options. There is Cephas, Uther's Devotion, and Final Verdict. Cephas is the best all around and should be crafted on a chest, providing CC reduction on top of a huge burst to stats whenever you CC a target. And as a rep paladin, you're usually aiming to burst inside of a Hammer of Justice, so this just makes your burst windows that much stronger. In some matchups though, and especially if you're playing more cleave-based compositions, such as Warrior Ret for instance, Uther's Devotion is a great alternative. This allows you to get your blessings back a lot sooner. So, we'll provide you and your team with added mobility from freedom and some extra utility from Blessing of Sacrifice and Protection. If you craft in Uther's Devotion, make sure it's on the chest piece. 
Then, finally, the third legendary is Final Verdict. This replaces Templar's Verdict with the new ability called Final Verdict, alongside giving you a small chance to activate Hammer of Wrath. We recommend this legendary because it's a very strong tool when facing either warriors or monks. The reason for this is that Final Verdict, unlike Templar's, can be used while disarmed, resulting in your burst windows being that much harder to shut down. If you craft a Final Verdict, be sure to do it on your chest. But aim for a Cephas first, then, as you get more Soul Ash, you can finally pick up a Verdict and Uther's Devotion to swap to depending on the circumstances. Finally, for Stat Prio, aim for Strength, then Versatility, followed up with Haste, with Crit and Mastery being a tad weaker. Ideally, you want to aim for anywhere between 15 and 20% Haste. Moving on to Holy Paladins, now starting with Covenant Choice, there are two options. The best all-around and more defensive choice is Kyrian. Divine Toll allows you to do some very strong healing on only a 1 minute CD, holy shocking your target and up to 5 other allies. This is a lot stronger than its face value, because of the added synergy with our legendary of choice alongside the added holy power you generate. The more offensive option, on the other hand, is Venthyr. The class covenant ability Ashen Hollow summons a very large ground effect on the floor which does a lot of healing and damage. What makes this so strong though is that, while standing inside the ground effect, the Holy Paladin can cast Hammer of Wrath and its damage is increased by 100%. So you're gaining some added Holy Power alongside also dealing some ridiculous damage. This makes it a great option for things like BGs or 2v2 Arena. For your legendary power as a Holy Paladin, there is one clear winner. Shock Barrier. This causes your Holy Shocks to apply a shield for 20% of the healing done. Over the course of a game, this adds up to some very strong free healing and synergizes great with the Divine Toll Curian Covenant ability. In regards to which slot, Shock Barrier should ideally be crafted on legs. Then, for stat priority, it's Intellect, followed up by Versatility, then Critical Strike, with Haste and Mastery being a lot weaker. Up next, rounding out the plate classes, we've got Death Knight. Starting off with Covenant of Choice, both Frost and Unholy want the same Covenant, which is of course the Necrolords. The primary reason for this is the Abomination Limb Covenant ability, which deals some decent damage and grips targets to your location. This is great, as you can grip multiple enemies into range and prevent them from getting away. Then, for Legendary Choice, starting off with Frost DK, you're going to want to be picking up Absolute Zero crafted on Bracers. Absolute Zero cuts your Frost Storm's Fury cooldown in half and turns it into a powerful stun, stunning every target hit for 3 seconds. This is great when combined with Abomination Limb and Blinding Sleet for some super potent setups. Unholy, on the other hand, should look to craft Frenzied Monstrosity. This increases your own and your pet's attack speed whenever you use Dark Transformation. Providing a nice boost to your overall damage, this is especially good as Death Coil also reduces the cooldown of your Dark Transformation. When crafting Frenzied Monstrosity, make sure to craft it on the leg slot. Then, for stat priorities, both Frost and Unholy pretty much share the same stats with Unholy wanting Strength, then Versatility, then Mastery, followed up by Haste and Crit. Whereas Frost is the exact same, but values Crit over Haste. Nonetheless, aim for Versatility and Mastery. Alright, with all of our plate classes covered, let's move on to Mail, starting with Hunters. In regards to Covenant Choice, it's simple. All specs of Hunter want to be the same Covenant for PvP, which is Kyrian. Even despite the nerfs, the power of the Covenant ability, Resonating Arrow, is incredibly strong. Not only does it deal some decent initial damage and increase your critical strike chance, but more importantly, it allows you to ignore line of sight. This on Marksmanship is of course invaluable, giving enemies no chance of line of sight in your burst. Whereas on Survival, this can also be utilized with Harpoon for some advanced traversing. Luckily enough, both Marksmanship and Survival want the same legendary as well, Craven Stratagem. This legendary is just absurd, while it may not look it from face value. Craven Stratagem not only reduces the cooldown of Feign Death, but also removes all negative effects from yourself. You also don't get affected by the negative effects like the damage from Unstable Affliction or the fear from Vampiric Touch, for example. As for the preferred slot to craft this legendary on, it should always be the chest. While the best all around for most circumstances, there are some times where you just want some added damage and for this, if you're playing survival, you'll want to pick up Latent Poison Injector, ideally crafted on the head slot. Then, for an offensive option, but this time as MM, 
Surging Shots offers the highest damage output, increasing the damage of rapid fire and giving Aim Shot a chance at resetting the cooldown. Then, finally for stat priorities, MM aims for agility, followed up with versatility, then critical strike, with mastery and haste being a tad weaker. And then survival wants again agility, followed up by versatility, but this time favors haste over crit. Up next, we've got Shaman starting off with Elemental. For their covenant of choice, it's Necrolord. Elemental Shaman gets the ability Primordial Wave. This is one of the most understated covenant abilities out there. What it does is apply a Flame Shock to your target and cause your next Lava Burst to also hit every target that currently has a Flame Shock on it. This not only does some big AoE damage if you have multiple Flame Shocks out, but also very impactful single target damage as Lava Burst right now really packs a punch. Then, as your Legendary, you're going to want the Wind Speaker's Lava Resurgence. This Legendary simply gives you a free instant Lava Burst every time you use Earth Shock as well as increasing the damage of that burst very consistent, and a lot of added damage throughout the game. As for which slot, preferably craft it on your boots. Then, for stat priority, it's as follows. Intellect, then versatility, followed up by haste, critical strike, and finally mastery. Moving on to the Shaman's melee spec of enhancement, your covenant choice is a little different. You're going to want to be Venthyr. The reason for this is the powerful covenant ability Chain Harvest. This is so strong for enhancement thanks to its synergy with Maelstrom Weapon turning what's normally a relatively long cast into an instant AoE nuke as well as increasing its damage. When it comes to Legendary, there is only one choice and it's one of the main reasons for Enhancement's current strength, Doom Winds. This greatly empowers your Wind Fury weapon, making it 100% chance to proc and increasing its damage for 12 seconds, giving you some insane burst every one minute to line up with your Bloodlust or Heroism. For your Doom Winds Legendary, make sure to craft it on the headpiece. Then, for stat priority, you've got two options. First is agility over versatility over haste, then crit and mastery. Going with haste will offer you a lot more sustained damage. But if you want to purely focus on those one-shots, you can go for a more burst-oriented stat priority, opting to go for mastery over haste. Then, last but not least, to round off Shaman, we've got Resto. Much like Elemental, Resto Shaman should side with the Necrolords. Again, you get access to Primordial Wave. While the added healing waves are not that impactful, Primordial Wave just acts as an extra Riptide on a different school of magic, and with Riptide doing a ton of healing right now, having an extra charge is nice to have. The legendary of choice for Resto Shaman is Earthen Harmony. Earthen Harmony increases the healing that your Earth Shield does by 150% if the target is below 75% HP. This legendary and the strength of Riptide provides Resto with an abundance of instant healing. For stat prio, the Resto Shaman aims for intellect, then versatility, mastery, with critical strike and haste being a lot weaker. Alright, with Shaman covered, our next class is Druid. Kicking things off with Feral, you've got two options for your Covenant. Overall, Kyrian is the safe bet, providing you a 15% damage increase on a 1 minute CD from the Covenant ability Kindred Spirits thanks to Lone Empowerment a short cooldown damage increase that's consistent and easy to use. But for an alternative, Night Phase Convoke the Spirits offers a more RNG-based approach. It's easy to counter as you can be interrupted or stunned on the channel, but if you are able to get the cast off, it's going to provide you with an insane amount of burst, especially if you get lucky with Ferocious Bites. Honestly, both are very strong, and it's just whether you prefer RNG burst or consistency. Then, for your Legendary, the Eye of Fearful Symmetry is the standout winner. It causes your Tiger's Fury to empower your next two finishing moves, causing them to restore combo points. This allows you to do extra ferocious bites during your burst windows. As for which slot, you should aim to craft this legendary on a helmet. And as for which stats Pharaoh wants to aim for, agility, then versatility and mastery, with crit and haste being the weakest two secondaries. Moving on now to the not so aptly named Balance Druids. For Covenant choice, it's exactly the same as Feral Druid. Kyrian is the preferred choice by most top players, as it gives a large damage boost on a 1 minute CD, which syncs up nicely with Root Beam, making every setup that much more potent. There also isn't any real counterplay. It's very consistent and easy to use, which is why the pros prefer it. Then there's Night Fate, which gives you access to Convoke the Spirits, which, if you're interested in WoW PvP, you've probably already seen the clips. Convoke has a chance to fire random spells at random enemies, ranging from Wrath to Star Surges, or even full moon procs. And if you're lucky enough to get the latter, your enemies are as good as dead. The issue with Convoke is that not only does it have a certain RNG factor attached, 
So for instance, you could get zero star surges and zero full moons, and it ends up not really doing all that much damage, but it's also very easy to counter if enemies are aware. Either an interrupt or a stun or even a grounding totem will render this two minute CD useless. So again, it's up to you what you want to pick. The more fun RNG Covenant of Night Fae with the potential for crazy one shots or the safe, consistent and always strong option of Kyrian. Now, for Legendary, you're going to want to craft Time Worn Dreambinder. This Legendary reduces the Astral Power cost and increases the damage of your Star Surge by 10% stacking twice. Why this is so powerful is that inside of PvP, Star Surge makes up the majority of your damage and is how you look to score kills. This Legendary also allows you to do up to 4 Star Surges in a single burst window, so it's really a no-brainer. As for which slot, you should craft your Time Worn Dreambinder on chest. Then, for stat priority, it's all about versatility and haste, at least after intellect that is, with crit and mastery being both a lot weaker. Rounding out druids, our final spec is of course Resto. Resto druids are a little different with their covenant choice compared to the other two specs, as the covenant choice is Necrolord. The reason for this is that Adaptive Swarm plays into the druid playstyle incredibly well. It's an instant healing over time effect, which also increases the power of your hots on the target. Adaptive Swarm also contributes to a Druid's Mastery Harmony, an extremely strong Covenant ability with a very low cooldown. Then, this is further improved upon by the Resto Druid's legendary of choice, Verdant Infusion. Verdant Infusion, which should be crafted on shoulders, makes it so that your Swift Men no longer consumes healing over time effects, but instead extends the duration of your Hots by 8 seconds. This means that you can extend the duration of Adaptive Swarm and also not have to worry about Swift Men consuming your healing over time effects. This is a great legendary that not only buffs your single target healing, but also saves you a ton of globals and also mana. Then, for stat priority, intellect is king, followed up by versatility, with haste and mastery being of equal value. Next up, we have rogues, and for this, we'll just be covering subtlety and assassination. For covenant choice, both sub and assassination want the same, which is Kyrian. The reason for this is the Echoing Reprimand Covenant ability, which, even despite multiple nerfs, still is head and shoulders above the rest for PvP. Echoing Reprimand generates two combo points and does some very strong initial damage, followed up by then empowering your finishers on top of costing less combo points. All around, it's an extremely strong Covenant ability, especially if further paired up with the Reverberation Conduit. Then, when it comes to legendary choices for subtlety, there are two options. The best is Mark of the Master Assassin. This gives you 100% critical strike for 4 seconds after breaking stealth. This makes openers extremely impactful. Also, as a sub rogue, you should be consistently looking for resets and opportunities to re-stealth to make maximum use of this legendary. As for which slot, Risk provides the biggest bonus. For more slow-paced matchups or in those games where you're unable to consistently go for resets, a good alternative is Invigorating Shadow Dust. This legendary reduces the remaining cooldown of your abilities by 20 seconds after using Vanish. This includes strong cooldowns like Shadow Blades, Shadow Dance, Kidney Shot, and even Blind. Invigorating Shadow Dust can be crafted on either neck or chest, so should always be crafted on a chest piece for the extra stats. Then, for subtlety stat priority, you're going to want to aim for versatility and mastery, with versatility being the preferred stat. Moving on to assassination, your legendary of choice is going to be Doomblade. Doomblade attaches a strong bleed to your mutilate, as well as further increasing the damage of your envenom for each bleed you have active on a target, making this legendary improve not only your consistent damage, but also your burst. And if you want to give assassination a try, your stat priority is as follows. Agility over versatility, over haste, over crit, with mastery being the weakest stat. Continuing with our leather classes, next up is Monk. For Covenant choice, both Windwalker and Mistweaver want the same, Kyrian. Kyrian for Windwalker right now is what makes the spec. The huge boost to mastery thanks to weapons provides them with an insane damage boost. Not to mention Blackout Kick will also reduce the CD of Rising Sun Kick and Fist of Fury allowing them to pump out even more damage. As for Mistweavers, it's again just a nice boost to one of their favorite stats of mastery. Although granted the reset on Essence font isn't too impactful, the Covenant overall still provides the biggest benefit. Moving on to Legendary Choice, starting off with Windwalker, you're going to want to pick up Invoker's Delight. This gives you a huge boost to haste during your cooldowns, making your burst window that much stronger. Although haste isn't generally a good stat for Windwalker, having this much bonus haste during your CDs increases the channel time of your Fists of Fury and makes it incredibly valuable. 
When crafting Invoker's Delight, the best slot is going to be a headpiece. Then, finally, for your stat priority as Windwalker, you're going to want Agility, of course, followed up by Versatility and Mastery, with Haste and Crit being equal levels after that. Tracking back to Mistweavers now, their legendary of choice is going to be Clouded Focus. This buffs your healing with Enveloping or Vivify while channeling Soothing Mists, as well as also reducing their mana cost. As you're always looking to cast these spells during your Soothing, it's an obvious choice. Not to mention, it helps monks with one of their major weaknesses in mana efficiency. And to wrap up Mistweavers, their stat priority is the exact same as Windwalker, but of course you should prioritize Intellect. Next up, we have Demon Hunters with their DPS spec of Havoc. Starting as always with Covenant Choice, the preferred option is Night Fae. The main reason for this is the huge DPS Covenant class ability of The Hunt. The Hunt, if you've not seen it, has a huge range of 50 yards and causes you to charge your target. On impact, you'll strike them for a big burst of initial damage, root them, and then leave a powerful damage over time effect for 6 seconds. You'll also heal for a portion of the damage you deal, fitting with the theme of the Demon Hunter's high mobility and leech. And then, for your legendary of choice, it's going to be the defensive option of the Darkest Hour, which is essential in such a fast-paced meta. This legendary is so strong because it works with the Cover of Darkness PvP talent, as well as not putting your own darkness on CD when it procs, making it that much stronger. Then, between chest and legs, you should be looking to craft the Darkest Hour on chest. For your Havoc DH stat priority, it's going to be Agility, followed up by Versatility, Haste, with Crit and Mastery being a lot weaker. Moving on, we've got Mages. First, we have Fire and Arcane, and luckily, both of these specs share the same recommended Covenant choice of Night Fae. Night Fae provides you with the Covenant class ability Shifting Power. This channeled cast does some decent damage, but more importantly, reduces the cooldown of your other abilities. This allows you to get your powerful offensive cooldowns back like Arcane Power or Combustion a lot sooner, as well as reducing the cooldowns on abilities like Blink or Counterspell, providing you with more CC or mobility. A great choice both offensively and defensively. However, if you want to focus on Frost, Venthyr provides a much stronger alternative, giving you access to Mirrors of Torment. This is so strong because you gain access to flurry procs during your offensive damage, really rounding out your burst rotation. For legendaries, the best legendary all around is going to be the more defensive option of Triune Ward. This legendary causes your barrier to also grant the effects of the other two mage specs. So, for example, if you're Frost, you'll gain both Blazing Barrier and Prismatic Barrier. This not only makes you extremely durable and provides you with good dispel protection, but also as you're getting the benefit of every barrier, the reduced duration on magic effects from Prismatic, the added physical damage reduction and bonus damage from Blazing Barrier, and the slow from Ice Barrier. When you craft your Triune Horde, make sure it's on a chest piece. While being the best for all three specs, if you want a pure damage option for when you're not being focused in a certain matchup, you can look to go for either Fevered Incarnation for Fire, which gives you up to 15% increased damage during your combustion windows, Freezing Winds for Frost, giving you added Fingers of Frost procs whenever you use Frozen Orb, or Arcane Bombardment for Arcane providing a very strong execute effect to your Arcane Barrage when used on targets below 35% health. Then, for stat priority, all three mage specs share the exact same. You want intellect pieces with versatility and haste for the most part, with then critical strike and mastery being weaker. Alright, for our pen ultimate class, we've got warlocks. For covenant choice, all three specs share the same preferred covenant, which is Night Fae. Night Fae is good for two reasons. First is their class covenant ability of Soul Rot. Soul Rot has a 1 minute CD and does some decent damage to a target and nearby enemies and applies a damage over time effect. Then, for the next 8 seconds, Drain Life will also hit all targets affected. While this is obviously very strong for Affliction due to inevitable demise, the initial damage is still good for Destro. The second reason Night Fae is so strong is for Soul Shape. Warlock, in order to survive in the current meta, needs to utilize their mobility in order to kite. Soul Shape helps immensely with this, as you can combine it with Gateway and Demonic Circle to build distance. Moving on to legendary choices, starting off with Affliction, it's a no-brainer. You're going to want Sacrilash's Dark Strike, crafted on legs. This legendary is honestly one of the most powerful legendaries in the game right now, attaching a 50% instant slow to a Warlock's main rotation, as well as improving the damage of Corruption by 15%, one of your main damage over time effects. Destro, on the other hand, not having access to an instant Corruption, prefers to go with the legendary of Cinders of Ajakir. 
This simply grants her Conflag an additional charge as well as reducing its recharge rate. This is a huge boost to your overall instant damage and a must have. Although their legendaries are different, stat priority for both specs remains the same. Intellect, Versatility, and Haste with Mastery being a close third and Crit being much weaker. Last, but definitely not least, we've got Priest. As for Covenant choice, it's very clear cut. Venthyr for all three specs, so Shadow, Holy, and Disc. The primary reason for this is the incredibly strong Covenant class ability, Mind Games. This is one of the strongest offensive buttons in the game, dealing some very high initial damage before then causing the target's healing to do damage and damage to do healing. Mind Games also has the added benefit of working with Shadow Priest Mastery, making it deal some added damage. Then, for Disc, Mind Games counts towards Atonement Healing, making it very powerful both defensively and offensively. Then, for Legendary Choice starting off with Shadow Priest, there are two options. The recommended choice and best all around is going to be Cephas. Cephas is just very consistent and good in every circumstance. You're going to get a 10% reduction to all CC effects thrown your way, while also still being able to easily proc the huge boost of stats provided by either securing CC or using Dispel Magic on your targets. When crafting this, make sure it's on your chest piece. The alternative option is Twins of the Sun Priestess. This gains the edge offensively when playing with another caster, so for example when paired up with a mage, balanced druid, or warlock. So honestly, it depends which composition you plan on playing. Aim to craft your twins on a headpiece. Moving on to stat priority as shadow, you're going to want intellect, versatility, haste, followed up by mastery and crit. Next up, let's talk about disc priests starting off with their legendary choice. And it's a bit up in the air which is the definitive best, but depending on which type of PvP you prefer, it can make your choice a lot easier. The three options are Crystalline Reflection, the Penitent One, and Twins of the Sun Priestess. Crystalline Reflection causes your shield to do some added healing and also damage. If you want a good all-around legendary, this is more than likely the best option. It especially shines in 2v2 where the added damage is a lot more noticeable. Ideally, craft it on a shoulder slot. If you just want pure throughput for things like 3v3 or Battlegrounds, then the Penitent One has the edge, being the best purely defensive option. This legendary gives your Radiance a chance to cause your next Penance to be greatly empowered. Some very strong healing, and with Ultimate Radiance being almost a must-have in the current meta, this legendary is a great pickup. As for which slot, aim to craft on Boots. Then, finally, Twins of the Sun Priestess is a good offensive option when you primarily play with casters or a setup comp. This allows you to give power infusion to your ally and still gain its benefits. In compositions like RMP, for instance, this can give you the extra damage to more easily close out games. If Twins of the Sun Priestess is more your style of legendary, craft it on shoulders. Then, for stat priority, you share the same as Shadow. So, aim for versatility and haste, followed up by mastery, with crit strike being the lowest value. Alright, last up on our list of specs to cover is going to be Holy. In regards to legendaries, the best option all around is Harmonious Apparatus. This powerful legendary helps to reduce the cooldown of your holy words, allowing you to get your stun from Chastise and instant heal from Serenity back a lot sooner. Alternatively, again, Twins of the Sun Priestess is a viable option depending on which comps you prefer to play. So if you like pairing with casters for instance, this is a great offensive option. Then just as an honorable mention, Bolt of the Heavens for Holy is great can allow you to be very annoying to deal with for melee cleaves, rotating between life gripping yourself to allies and greater fade to avoid all damage. As for which slot for all three, Harmonious Apparatus should be crafted on shoulders, as should Twins of the Sun Priestess. Bolt of the Heavens, on the other hand, should be crafted on your Bracer slot. As for stat priority, Intellect and Versatility above all else, Haste and Mastery of equal value, with Crit being the weakest. Alright, that's going to be it for the best in slot covenants, stats, and legendaries for every single viable spec right now in PvP. We hope this helped, and if you enjoyed the video, be sure to drop a like, hit that subscribe button, and ring that bell. Until next time, thanks for watching.